Hi, my name is Leah of Take a Six Podcast, and I am so excited to announce that for our 50th episode, we have a sponsor. I cannot begin to tell you thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and how much we truly appreciate your support this past year of episodes and guests and content and postings and comments and just all the love that we have received. And so we're so excited to be able to move up and (laughs) celebrate with you. Our sponsor for this episode is Bruch. Bruch is an electric toothbrush that will change the way you think about brushing your teeth. With powerful sonic technology and ultra gentle bristles, the brush redefines what it means to have super clean teeth. It's like that feeling when you just leave the dentist, a fresh whole mouth clean every single day. Our listeners get 15% off their total purchase with the code POD15, that's P-O-D-1-5. Follow the link in the show notes and enter the code pod 15 pod 15 to get your exclusive discount and upgrade your oral health care routine. Thank you so much for supporting our sponsors. Let's hop right into the show for our 50th episode. We are looking back on some of the conversations that we've had with different guests, our hosts, and some of their interesting responses. Enjoy. And without further ado, Take Up Space Podcast. What is the funniest video you've seen on uh, YouTube or any social media as of late? It's a video on Instagram. And it's, I don't know where they're at, but it's a security guard that's telling some dude to get away from the building. He's like, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. I don't mean that. I don't mean to do this. I know, I know. And he just goes up to hit him. And, then, and he's like, I done told you. He's like, you right, you right, you right, you right. I'm sorry. Wait, wait. I'm Why sorry, did you man. escalate you know, so quickly? You know, man, I'm sorry. I just, I just, and he goes back. <laughs> How, okay, wait. Let me make sure that I'm visualizing this right. The homeless guy hit the security guard, or the security guard hit the homeless guy. No, the homeless dude hit the security guard. Why did he? What? what how did this escalate? What did he <laughs> apologize so many times and just went back? And man, it was funny. Oh, how? I, I look. I just laugh every time I see it. I don't ask no questions. Is a memory that always brings a smile to your face from childhood. <laughs> Who would you like to go first? I'll let you go first, Ma. Uh, okay. Uh, I believe that when I was in high school, actually, and there was a group called uh, Close Up, and I came home and I told my dad, and my dad asked, do you want to go? Because I had had chicken pox, and I wasn't able to participate in the fundraiser. And so I didn't even know that I was qualified to go. So when I came home and I told my dad, after I had gone back to school after two weeks of not being there, my dad said, do you really want to go? I said, yes. And so we had a good conversation. And he says, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, I want to be president of the United States. He said, I believe you can do that. And so my dad, he says, come go with me. And he says, how much is it? I said, well, I think it was $1,300, $1,300 or $1,600. And went to the bank. My dad withdrew the money from the bank. And the next day, he went to the school and he paid the money for me to go. And so that was really, that still is with me till today. The belief and the support uh, coming from my dad and my mom. And um, I'll always cherish and remember that memory. Mm. I don't think I've ever heard that story. What about you, Dad? Playing kickball, so Francis Drake Elementary School. That was it. How old were you? Mm, Between seven and 12 years old. Okay. Who gives you the best advice? I would say I've received the best advice from my mother, Mrs. Oh, Grace Adelaide. <laughs> yes, she does. They do give the best advice, even though sometimes it can be a bit persistent. But yes, my mother gets the best advice. And then it's my wife. 
Okay. So what is the best, what is one of the best pieces of advice your mom has given you recently? Um, I would say be patient with things, with life and just whatever task you're trying to do. I don't feel that just because you're at a certain stage in your life or a certain stage in the process that you feel you need to rush because others around you may be ahead of you. Like just take your time and things will work out in the best fashion for yourself and your situation. That's good advice, especially now where we're in the social media age of comparison. Yeah, good job, mom. Yeah. Which shoes would you love most to have in your closet that you don't have already? That I don't have already. Oh, uh, the Marty McFlies. I would definitely love those. Definitely. I don't, I, I probably wouldn't even wear them. If I did wear them, they're probably special occasion. Those are, are those in mass production or they're just special, specialty made? They're only specialty made. They have the, uh, the ones that actually do the, um, the actual shoestrings, the way that they're supposed to, mm-hmm. they have those now, but those are like those are rare. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then, but then they also have the technology of the Marty McFly's, the lighten up, and the actual uh, the the laces. They have that in regular shoes too. Yeah, they, got them in, uh, they got them in the Jordan Eleven, the Concords, um, and I think they got them in like a couple basketball shoes. Mm-hmm. Tinker Hat, Tinker Hat is a uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I think they got a few of them in like walking shoes or something like that. Yeah, walking shoes. Yeah, walking shoes. Yeah, I forget what the brand is called. Uh, but however it goes, they got their technology. For me, the shoes that I don't have that I wish I did have are the uh, the Cavalier. I think it has to be the fours. The Cavalier. Oh yeah, fours. the black ones. Black ones. Yeah, the black oh, yeah. Cavalier fours. Uh, the Jordans. Jordan four. I think those are an amazing shoe. I think the four and the five, and the four to five and the three, probably in that order, are the okay. best Jordans made. Like as far as the, as far as how they look. Best magic trick that you've seen. Mm. The best, I don't know if it's the best one, uh, but I'll probably say the one with like the they put the lady in the cage and the tiger comes out. Oh, okay, yeah, because I still be wondering, like, okay, yeah. is she under the thing? Because even you know that they came out with a show, um, uh, about like basically showing how they do the magic tricks, mm-hmm. but I've never seen them actually do that one, and I'm kind of curious, like, is it really? A tiger? It's kind of like the the rabbit in the hat. It's uh, it seems like it's like a mirror trick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't. Uh, I think I took when, when it comes to mine, what's the, my favorite magic trick? Would be that one, the tiger one. Okay. Okay. Really? That's a pretty good you? trick. Um, I don't know if it's considered magic, but. It's it's a trick that I'm that I've been a part of like for a while where I give all my love and support to people and then really? they just disappear. <laughs> so <laughs> I mean you I know. thought you'd be like <laughs> like a real magic trick. I'm I, here, like, to think. I did I did meet a for real magic trick. <laughs> if you could look like anyone, who would it be? Look like anyone. Yeah. Hmm. My mother, um, and not to say that I don't love the way I look, mm-hmm. but it's more about how she felt when you looked at her um, and how you felt when you looked at her. And mm. I would definitely want that kind of like comfort. I would want somebody to feel comfortable around me the way that people felt um, sure and comfortable about her. Mm, okay. Interesting. What's your favorite way to spend time with your family? Uh, camping. I love camping. You just like go out to the woods, pretend you're broke for like three days. And then, <laughs> just, and then just come back home and like, hey, everything's fine now. We can take baths. Well, the experience of camping is awesome. 
but sleeping in a tent at night, like just because like my back's too messed up to just sleep in a sleeping bag anymore, so I had to sleep on an air mattress. Mm-hmm. And like now, I don't know what the deal is. Like halfway through the night, the thing's like halfway inflated, and it's so annoying. <laughs> um, but it's like everything but that I love. Like I, my favorite thing in the world is having a campfire. It's the best. <laughs> I love it. I, if I could have a like a little fire every night, I would. It's just so relaxing. I love like I just recently saw maybe like five years ago the uh, glass pits that are essentially smokeless, but they have like the different the blue flame, and uh, depending on the color of the glass, that the flame is just like you can have a glass fire pit. So I like that. But yeah, I, gave, I gave my co-host when he moved into his house. He bought a house like right before we started making our show, and he bought uh, like a patio furniture for his deck and it has like an umbrella hole in the middle and mm-hmm. we had this little metal fireplace and uh my girl's sister bought it for us but she didn't know it was for a table so once he moved i was like oh you have one it's because it goes through like the propane the little propane tanks for like a lantern ah uh, okay you line that up with the hole for the umbrella and you screw it into the fireplace Mm-hmm. So then it just looks like you have this tabletop fireplace and there's little like rocks in it. It's like a glass circle. And yeah, you can, it has little, you can adjust it. And when it, the flames come up, they'll be blue because it's all running on propane. But it's, <laughs> it's cool to just sit there and it's like having a campfire, but you don't get that like crackle. I, I love the sound of a, of a fire, like a campfire. Yeah, I just, I like the heat that it offers and the ambiance that it offers, but I don't need to be that close to nature. My yeah. allergies won't let me be great. If your friends had to describe you to someone that you don't know, how would they do it? What words would they say? This is, yeah, Crystal, <laughs> she is. Oh, uh, if they had to this, I don't know. How would they describe me? <sighs> okay, so a lot of people think I'm mean when they first meet me. Um. I guess I could be a little, I'm a Leo. So (laughs) I guess that comes off when I first meet people. So they think I'm a little full of myself. Um, But I think once you get to know me, I don't know. Special. I think my, I think, I think my, my, like my friends who know me, know me, they think I'm weird. So I would say weird. (laughs) What's your favorite animated movie? Ooh, ooh, Spider Into the Spider Verse. Oh hell yeah! Such Why? a good film. Oh, um, just recently on on TikTok, there has been so many like videos like pick po- uh, pinpointing like all the little minute details that you might have missed, and it's so to like to the point of it. Like, there's so many d- details that they add in that you wouldn't even notice, but once you do. It just makes it so much better. It's it's such a good film. Hello. Such a good question. Damn, well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I picked that one. You're welcome, Jared. <laughs> All right, what about you, Jared? Um, brave. Brave. You know, you know that one about the, the Scottish lady with the bow? I love that movie. I love that movie. I just watched it like three days ago. For like the thousandth time. I just yeah. I, I just can't not, not watch it. No, it's, it's it's brilliant. Um, I, I do watch it myself, so like I love when I, I got to see it in that, and then because it's it's about like I guess Scottish history, culture, blah blah blah. Being from Ireland, it's very similar, so it was fun to watch. If you could be anybody for a day, who would you be? Oh, like alive or no longer living? Um, I'll let you. I'll let you decide. Oh, if I could be anybody for a day. Who would I be? Well, I mean, right now I'd be Elon Musk and I would prevent, I would, I would jump into his body uh, and prevent him from doing all the crazy stuff he's trying to do with Neuralink. uh, Because I just did an episode on Neuralink and all the things that that's going to do. Because half of his projects is, I think, going to be revolutionary for, for the world. And the second half of his project, I think, is going to destroy the world. Uh, so 
it, it's kind of a it's a catch twenty two because on one hand I want him to do the to do the project. What is your favorite place to hide from the world? Sometimes the world can be overwhelming, too much. So, what is your safe haven? What is your what is that safe space that you go to to be like? Nope, I'm shut in. Nobody come talk to me. Leave me alone. Let me be here. Writing. Writing. Writing you- is my thing. And I write about all types of different things and just whatever is going on in my mind at the time. Okay. Write it down. I do a lot of reading. And in order for me to retain the information, I need to write it down. <laughs> so yeah, writing is my thing. I find myself, now that I'm doing a podcast, now I write and talk to myself. So my teenage son comes out of his room on Saturdays and he's like, is everything all right out here? I'm like, yeah, just <laughs> writing and talking, writing and talking to myself. <laughs> what do you cherish most? Time. Time. Why time? Because something you can't get back. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So how do you cherish your time? I'm mindful of how I spend it. And that's something I have to work myself into because I feel that um, we take it for granted, right? We always think, oh, we have a tomorrow, another minute, another hour, or however you want to perceive it. And we really don't. If 2020 has taught us anything, is that time is definitely a thing. Yes, absolutely. What memory do you cherish the most? Ah, uh, Shoot, the memory I cherish the most? That's a great question because that kind of caught me flat-footed. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you a memory I, I'm not sure if cherished the most, but it's probably one I remember the most is, uh, and I think you and I were talking recently on Kel shows, Culture Marauders, about uh, my sister passing away uh, in, mm-hmm. around Thanksgiving. And the one thing I remember particularly, and I think even more of it now, she took me from my first concert, etc. But when it, it was kind of loyalty, I was playing Frozen Catchers in the backyard, which is where you try to run up and touch people and you freeze them. Yeah. And my porch was base and I ran to my porch and I can still remember this. I couldn't have been more than six, but I ran face first into the porch and nearly put my eye out and I was bleeding profusely. And there was Ooh. one of those neighborhoods where there were kids everywhere. So we had like 10 kids, 12 kids playing frozen catchers. And literally within like two seconds, it was like somebody turned on the light in a roach house because all the roaches just scattered. <laughs> the only person that stayed there, however, was my sister, of course. And she made sure, of course, she was freaking out, but she was trying not to freak out. So uh, she she was able to get my dad. And it was it was a crazy memory. I know that's probably as, as cherished. Um, I wouldn't have said that three or four months ago. But since my sister passed away, I think about uh, a lot how good of a person she was in a lot of areas. She had her demons. She had her faults like we all do. But yeah, uh, by and large, she, she didn't always do well, but she meant well. Mm-hmm. And th- that was an instance where she she kind of just looking out for me and, and being being what a big sister is. So I, I think of that. I've been thinking about that a bit lately. What is the best thing about the age that you're at right now? Um, The best thing about the age that I'm at right now is that. Um, very good question. Oh, um, is that I get to. Like, I have all the, the wealth of knowledge beforehand. Uh, which is for every age, you know, that you get to be like when you get to be 30, it's just like, oh, I, mean, I was real stupid when I was 20. So, like I get to, I get to figure out how stupid I was when I was 30. So yeah, being 40 is, is cool uh, because of that, you know, and I was really like, as much as I thought I was ridiculous when I was 20 at 30, not in a 40, I was ridiculous. I was ridiculous at, at, at uh, 20. You know, so now that I now that I get to be forty and see it, but yeah, but and then and then of course kids and everything, you know that 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 makes it more fun. It is. What's your favorite winter activity? Oh, my favorite winter activity is probably hibernation. <laughs> That's not an activity. That is definitely definitely an activity. What I love to sleep like cozying up. <laughs> What is cold outside and having your favorite blanket with your favorite mug and your favorite Shantico, which is a fancy Italian hot chocolate. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Oh, man, it is the best. But how is that an activity? You can do that all year long. Yeah, but hibernation in the wintertime because it's not as cold. Like, can you imagine being too hot to sleep? (laughs) 
<laughs> I would not want to like, sleep when it's hot. Exactly. Like, in the summertime, you can't hibernate, but you can hibernate in the winter. No, nobody needs What to. is, or what do you like and dislike about New Year's resolutions? Uh, I know for me, I, what I, okay, what I like about it is it gives me kind of like a motivation to start the new year off on a good note. Like, of course, I want to start every day off on a good note and in every day off on a good note, but I know it's not reality. Um, but setting a new year's resolution at times, it does help me become motivated. I have an idea of what I want to accomplish regardless of the outcome. Um, but I just least would say that's probably the only thing that I truly like about New Year's resolutions. Now, as far as dislike, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things. One, I always fail. I always fail. I'm being completely honest. There's, there's nothing about a New Year's resolution that I think of like, oh, wow, I did it. No, I never do it. <laughs> I like for instance, I always say well this year I never I didn't say I wanted to try and lose weight, but maybe I wanna say for the past three years or so, I've always said I wanted to lose weight. And I'm like, you know what? It's just not meant to be. It's not gonna happen right here, right here, right now. And I I realized and I learned myself is that if I force if I have to mentally force myself to do something, that means I don't wanna do it. And I'm just like, I've accepted the the way that I am. I've accepted it. I love it. And who's to say later down the line that I do go ahead and lose weight? But hey, that's up in the air. When it's late in the morning and you're getting hungry, which lunch gets you excited the most? Is it multiple choice or I get to pick my own? No, you pick your own. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So late in the morning. So we're talking about like brunch. Yeah. Ooh. You haven't eaten breakfast. And well, I want to know which lunch is going to get you the most excited. It'll probably be a, it'll probably be a sandwich. It'll probably be a sandwich. If we don't like have the work for uh you know like a turkey and, and, and cheese type of sandwich, then I can always go to peanut butter and jelly. Strawberry jelly. What is the worst advice that you have ever received? <laughs> you, you know. I mean, you gotta be a little more specific, like uh, just any, just, just you can <laughs> something as a kid, something a few days ago, something at the beginning of the year. What is the worst advice that you have ever received? You know, I don't think it's the worst, but I think it's the first that comes to mind. After you had a few, and somebody gives you one more, and they tell you you good, after you try to be like, nah, I think I'm, I've reached my my limit, and you because you know yourself, you know your body, and yeah. Then, and somebody just totally like encourage you and says like, nah, you like, you got this, you good. Like, trust me, you know, and those are the last words you hear until you like go to a whole nother place. That's, I just feel like that's something everybody could, you know, resonate with. Yeah, I feel like that, yeah. <laughs> like direct advice is more so implied from like being around like the homies or whatever is not being like, real about how you feel in a certain situation like whether it be not really showing your feelings towards like a chick that you're interested in mm -hmm. or not really being like hey you know this isn't cool you know what I'm saying whatever y'all doing right now it's not cool it may, it, may, it may be popular right but it's not really cool like mm -hmm. just not being real in a situation be like nah that's 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 not what I want to do you know what I mean okay okay that, that, that's what popped in my mind and something I, I can actually caveat off of what Caesar just said. Um, just being with the homies is it's kind of like your influencers. So the people that influence you, they can go in a negative way. Even though it's not the popular decision to make, they can give you that type of advice. They say, yeah, don't do this. Don't do that. He said, okay, yeah, I'm going to take it that route. But you got to learn the hard way. 
because that's when you actually start going to followers. Mm. My credit cards are due today. I don't <sighs> want to pay them. <laughs> Listen, I feel like they should have rewards programs because if you have been paying on time all year, mm -hmm. just let me take a month off. Well, they give you like some credit cards give you like cash incentive, cash back incentives or something. First of all, pennies on the dollar. Okay. Take, reduce the interest rate. If I'm paying on time all year, take the interest rate down. Right. Down to like one, one or two percent. I'll do that. One or two percent. Zero. Yeah. Just zero. Oh, okay. Ben, what is the last song that you listened to? The last song I listened to. Uh, I've got the victory by Ricky Diller. Actually, it popped up on my uh, YouTube uh, timeline today. I was just watching. Uh, I was just watching a little concert that he did. Ricky Diller. Yeah. That, I don't know what it is about that music. Like it's just like it's, it's like, real. It makes me want to go accomplish stuff. It makes me want to yeah. go like, like yeah, I can do it. Yeah, but it's, it's do real. You really. <laughs> It, I said it gives me the feeling. I'm not saying that I do stuff. It does give me the feeling. Yeah. But yeah. I like. I just want you to know, Kayla didn't tell me about Rance Allen. I had to find out mm -hmm. from well, somebody else like a day later. This, but at least you know now. I'm a huge Rance no. Allen fan. That's why she's upset that I didn't tell her that I was the first person who told her that he passed. I had to oh, find out from somebody who's not even related to me. He was mm. like, oh, yeah, Rance Allen died. Rance Allen, who? <laughs> like, who? At least you know. No, because literally when he said Rance Allen, I was like, it couldn't be the gospel singer. And I thought about the guy who played Jesus Shuttlesworth. Nope. From he That's Ray Allen. That's Ray Allen. It was an R. <laughs> Allen. <laughs> I was so I was in denial. I was like, it cannot yeah. be ransacked. What is one thing in your childhood that you have brought with you through the rest of your life? Oh, that pertains to myself, like that I do for myself. Anything for yourself, for other people. Uh, like it could be a conversation somebody had with you that just changed your life and you make sure to keep that in the front of your mind, a book that you read, a person you met. A thing that you did? Um, I think what I've taken back probably from my childhood is that back then, like I know you said that I used to be shy and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I basically did a complete, don't, that was smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a complete 360 to now. Um, I'm not shy anymore. So it's like I've learned to not be so closed off but at the same time, being open to other people, it's kind of like kicked me in the back, you know? And I'm like, okay, I'm too friendly. Okay, I'm getting kicked in the back. But what you want me to do? You want me to be quiet or you want me to talk? Like, which one you want me to do? So I think taken from my childhood was being shy, but I flipped it and turned it into being social. See what okay, I'm okay. So has... Which which part? Because I think that sometimes, especially when talking to new people, that shyness still comes out. I see. Yeah. Uh, but so that so that little piece is still there. It is. I, it's only with new people because I don't know how they're going to react to me. You know, I don't know if they're like, "Oh, she's cool," or "Oh, she's not cool," or "Okay, she's a bit much." Okay, let her. You know, let her speak or something. So I do get shy. Cause I'm like, oh, I want them to like me. I'm not more so stuck on like, okay, I want them to hate me, but it's like, I want them to like me cause I think I'm a cool person. So I want them to think I'm a cool person. So I, that's, I think that's when I tend to be shy. Just a tad bit, just a tad bit. Hmm. Depends on who it is. Depends on the environment. There's a lot of things that it depends on as well too. Yeah. There's a lot. Of, I think yeah. there's a lot of variables, especially when meeting new people. You don't yeah, know what the relationship could turn into, what their, right, their background are. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. That that makes a lot of sense. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. But I would just like to welcome everybody to another episode of Take Up Space Podcast. I am your host, Leah, and I am joined today with... How do you tell people they've outstayed their welcome without saying, hey, you've outstayed your welcome? <laughs> just eyes? And they'd be like, what? I'm like, 
Don't you want to go home? <laughs> and after that, with me, they started feeling the vibe. When I started walking so around you just, my own you house, just put it out there. Listen, when I start walking around my own house and treating you like furniture and not saying shit to you, <laughs> it's time for you to skirt. I don't even care who picking you up. It could be Godzilla. <laughs> like, look, Uber, Lyft, your mama, I don't care. So you got to go. I, when our, I, I and dad came here last. I picked them up from the airport. And once it got over like the three-day mark, because it's like three days maximum with me with him, I can't. He set up his own Uber to take him to the airport. <laughs> you had the opportunity to name a star. What would you name it? Oh, oh that's a tough question. <laughs> that's a tough question. Uh, inspire. Why inspire? Because that's all that's what I'm about, inspiring people. So if I'm like if I look up in the star and it reminds me like that's what I'm here for, that would be a constant reminder. Like when it gets dark, I can look up and I know inspire is looking down on me. So I, I'm gaining inspiration from the star and I'm giving out inspiration. So definitely inspire. I like it. I like it. And be in the back, inspire. <laughs> it sounds like a perfume or like a cologne or inspire. <laughs> You got to whisper it because it's coming at night. Just inspire. <laughs> my greatest privilege. My greatest privilege at the moment, I think, is where I'm living at. Um, state of Montana. This is probably the safest area I've ever lived in in my life in Missoula, Montana. And growing up, like in and around, um, you know, Pennsylvania, like outside of Philly, around Jersey, outside of like cities like Trenton and Camden, um, I have never lived in a less crime like ridden like area than I do right now. And so, like the kind of place where like you can legitimately like leave like the keys and the ignition of your car, no one's gonna take it. You can leave your house unlocked, no one's ever gonna come in. You can drop your wallet in a grocery store. Someone will track you down and give it back to you. Um, so privilege is living in this part of the country because this is the kind of stuff that I thought would only exist in like Disney movies, but it actually is real. And I'm living. If in there's it. one thing you had to tell your future self, it future? is November. It's November 10th. Okay. 2020. November 10th, 2020. What would you say to Sir Drake? Keep doing it. Step it up, but keep doing it. You're on a good road. I'm proud of you. And I love you. Get your wife something nice. I hope your future self listens to you. I'm sure your wife no. will appreciate it. <laughs> no. She deserve it. We've been talking and hang. Oh, but no, that's not it. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What does he say? Yeah. What did he say? It's not talking to Hankin. I it's know it's not. not. Mm -hmm. What did you say? What did you say? I got nothing. Uh, what, that's not what he said. What did you say? I can't think of what. It's not talking to Hankin. I'm, I'm no, it's not saying talking to Hankin in my head. For those who don't know who haven't figured it out, Kayla is trying to figure out what they say in the wood. Dun, 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 dun. Then, oh, Mackin and Hankin. <laughs> what is one thing that you have learned from this quarantine? Oh, God. Uh huh. That hurt. Let's just dive right in. Um, <laughs> I, 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 lately, a, a big lesson, and I mean, when I say lately, I mean like the past week or two. Okay. Yeah, uh, has been the, the importance of the illusion of movement, of motion of space suddenly my only place to be in my house is my bed oh. you know, I, I prop it up with pillows and, and, and it's one of those sort of it's not craftmatic <clears throat> sort of temperpedic you know thing where it sits up mm -hmm. suddenly this is my literally only place to be is like a six foot square area in my house and 
I hadn't realized how much that illusion of motion that I could at least sit at the dining room table to eat, you know, or, or write letters or whatever, that I could go down to my basement and record. Um, and as well, I live in New England, and so now we're having bad weather start to roll in, so I can't sit on the front porch and, uh, enjoy, you know, for more than a couple of seconds before I freeze to death. So suddenly I'm, I'm stuck in this very small space, and it's getting to me. It's that literal concept of having space is weighing on me. In, in, in a heavy way. And I think that's a big thing that I've learned from the pandemic. But thank y'all. Thank y'all so much for having me here tonight. I hope we're going to have a good time. We're going to be civil. We're going to smile. Because hey, I'm, I was telling my um my cousin about it earlier today. He, and they're like, all of them at the same time? And like, they ain't going to cuss each other out? i like, I don't know. I don't know. You know? So... But who's ever out here in the world that's listening, hearing my voice and seeing our faces, I don't know what tonight's going to be like. But I think it's going to be great. It seems like they have a, come from a great foundation. I'm excited for it. But you, look, phones falling over. That's not, hold on, hold on. See, that's the first thing. That wasn't her phone. That wasn't her phone. Get it together. Like... Uh, was that your phone or was that your the top of your laptop that fell over? No, you? it was the, it was my phone because my phone is against the laptop and I got Man. kids running around, so I'm trying to con it didn't happen before, so say less, because I was about to get on you right there. I was about to say, don't tell me you got one of them laptops with tape just keeping it together. It's like propped no, up. Tape. You know, it's like propped up and somebody no. bump a little bit though, because that's how it fell over, but it's okay. We just get how we live, man. You know what has really like fired you up? Uh either Passionately in a negative way or um, passionately in a positive way? So I guess passionately, pa passionately in a positive way, right? So just the idea, just the whole election concept, right? Just how everything is going with the elections, how we're, we're pinning our hopes on, on getting rid of one, one nuisance, right? And, and I'm sorry, my son is on school in the background, but uh, he'll be all shortly. But one- okay one perceived nuisance and then we're gonna elect somebody to come in and totally fix everything right everything's gonna be good happy day joe biden and kamala harris are in office everything's gonna be great right but, you know i it just annoys me the fact that we're still not getting the big picture we're not we're still not seeing the big picture of what really needs to be done and you know and in a sense i don't even think we really know what needs to be done there needs to be action behind the protests and 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 you know all the things that are going on and stuff like that and just electing somebody to replace the new, become the new head of the snake, it doesn't fix it. So it, it, that kind of annoys me, and and you know that that's kind of what I've been feeling this past week. You use your platform in such a unique way to not challenge people, because it's mm -hmm. even if you talk to someone who's, because um, you're a Christian, if you talk to someone who's not Christian, or talk to someone of a different faith, or talk to someone who is the complete opposite of you, right. it it like your the way you use your platform is more of a let's let's have a conversation let's see why why we see things differently and but but to what end what is the purpose of that um the purpose is the model of our show um and it comes from Martin the king i can just i can go on a long rabbit trail with it but he said at cornell university in the I can't give you the exact year, but it was in, you know, I think in the 1960s or so mm -hmm. that he believed men hate each other because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other and they don't know each other because of segregation and because segregation, segregation, we have miscommunication. And our goal and our mantra is to have this communication so we can start getting to know one another so we can start loving one another. And I attended University of Houston, go Cougs, and I... Um, was it my soft it was my junior year that I took a world religion class and it changed my life? What is something that you would go back and tell yourself maybe 10 years ago? Slow down. Uh, what the hell? why why slow down? 
Maybe, and I, you know what? I don't even think that I might say it like that. So I'll even rephrase. Um, and that's that slow down part, right? Because I could have. <laughs> I know you patient and everything. I could have taken that second. I would. I would tell myself ten years ago. Live in each moment. Mm. Just live in each moment. Um, I think I would have told myself that. 10 years ago in that way, because I think just the unfolding of actually understanding what a moment even is. Mm. Time is relevant in that statement. And so just understanding that in itself, creating a moment, forever is a moment for some people. Yeah. Let's see if I can You're old. retrain my body. Look, I've been old since I was like 15, if that's the barometer. <laughs> No. Okay. Now that I think about it, the reason why I downloaded the app and everything is because I remembered that I didn't eat breakfast like in high school and stuff. And when I would, would eat breakfast, my stomach, I would have like a lot of issues and stuff. Mm -hmm. And even um, back in the old world, when people would go out to work and everything, I wouldn't eat my first meal until maybe like two o'clock or so. So I was already fasting. And since we've been on quarantine, that's when I've just been eating like normal people, like three times a day. But um, I've been having more issues with it, more like grouchiness and stuff. And so trying to reset my body to pre-quarantine because, I mean, we're going to go back to regular life. Right? What, I don't even know what regular is. Like, I'm sitting here like Regina Hall, like, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just, as the as the baby in the family, do you think that you have more or less responsibility than anybody else? Like as of today? No, as the baby in the family, like growing up in a house full of people. Like, did you feel, do you feel like you had more? Do you feel like you had more, less, or the same um, responsibility as everybody else? Okay, I got to break this up because I feel as though when I was maybe like seven or eight or younger, I didn't have that many responsibilities. But once I could do chores on my own without <laughs> needing supervision, I feel like it'll, it'll be the same. Because I always hear, oh, you didn't you didn't have to do anything. I always took care of you. And it was like, well, I, I wasn't told to do stuff until I got the age to do it so younger I'll say no I mean younger I'll say uh, less responsibilities and then as I got older about the same why are you making that face no I was just I just wanted to, I never I never knew your perspective 